Hey everyone, welcome to Ian and Friends Gira d'Italia edition. I am Flow Bike Senior Editor Ian Dilly. And I am Michael Sheehan. Today we are going to talk about stage 17 of the Giro d'Italia. What do we see? Another insanely hard stage at the Giro. There yeah. are no, no easy days. Maybe yeah. it's just because we've been watching this race start to finish for the past two and a half weeks, but man, it's just on every day. Another straightforward sprint day that was anything but. I think that a lot of the peloton maybe heard Simon Yates say that he was going to race a bit more defensively and let some brakes go. So <laughs> everybody went for the breakaway today. It was insane. Especially uh, Luis Leon Sanchez. Every he, move. He was on quite the tear. We saw him giving the middle finger to his breakaway partners who were telling him to slow down just a little bit. Um, but he, he knew something that everyone else didn't know is that it wasn't going to be one of these like let the brake roll early and um, get a gap and yada 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 he it was an insanely hard day to get in the breakaway and really there was I mean I guess there was a breakaway finally but I mean it didn't go until what like 60k to go or something like that I mean for 100k no one got more than like 30 seconds off the front yeah if that and the biggest gap that the breakaway got was it was less than two minutes all day which is insane because on paper this should be a sprint day but as we've seen just time and time again at this Giro it's anyone's game and everybody really thought that they had a shot at the finish and when the break did form it was an all-star break I mean Luis Leon Sanchez while wow, Poles Ben Hermans good to see Israel Cycling Academy back up in the mix yeah uh, <laughs> really been holding my tongue on Israel Cycling Academy this whole tour. Like, I actually, I love that team. I've raced with them. They're great guys, and they're really, really good, but I've just been scratching my head as to why we haven't seen them at all. We haven't talked about them. You know, there are days when every single pro continental team in the Giro d'Italia is represented in the breakaway, and these are the kind of like just throwaway days where, you know, you know more or less the breakaway isn't going to work, and Cycling Academy just hasn't really been up there playing. We've seen Guillaume Bava, he had a great ride in Israel, and then he started going for sprints uh, in Italy, which was strange because he isn't a sprinter, but he's getting up there, you know, fair play to him. They know something you don't know, Michael. I, I think they, I, they've been saving it for week three. So that is actually <laughs> what I was getting to. I think that maybe their director made a really mature decision with the riders because they have some veterans like Ben Hermans who are like very very classy riders but then they have a lot of new guys who just have never done a grand tour and you know maybe they've done 10 14 day stage races but three weeks is another ball game and I think that maybe their director said just save as much energy as you can and then let it fly in the third week when everyone else is a bit tired and if that's the case they played the uh, they played the long game and good on them yeah, and not only were they, did they have Ben Hermans in the breakaway, which along with Sanchez, uh, Wout Poles, DeMarkey was also in there. These guys were in every breakaway until it went. I mean, it just proves try, try again until, until they let you go. I mean, they were obviously the strongest riders on the day, and, and, and they got out there. But um, And I think they ended up sixth on, a, on the day, too, in the sprint yeah, they were. Yeah, they, they were. Israel Cycling Academy was on the front of the race with 1K to go after the breakaway eventually came back. So um, let's get into why the breakaway came back. I mean, Bora, I mean, had an incredible ride as a team today. I mean, they were on the front all day. Um, when the, the break of the four strong riders actually did go, is Davide Formolo was on the front holding them in check until they got over the last climb and the team could chase them down to the flats. Um, Lotto pitched in to help for Van Poppel. And then you almost looked like a genius. So Because <laughs> the field was hit by crosswinds. I was like, it's happening. <laughs> I, it was so close. Lotto, was, Lotto and El Yumbo, they were just ripping it with about 35K to go. Field split. And yeah, like you said, Van Poppel... And uh, Bataglin, right? Mm -hmm. They ended up just on the wrong side of the split, and it looked like there was going to be a major selection in the field. You know, there were maybe 50 riders rolled clear, and it was just chaos behind. But Lotto had to sit up to let their two sprinters essentially join the party. They just got caught sleeping in the sprinter's lounge. Yeah, I mean, maybe a missed opportunity by Bora, by some of the GC teams like Sunweb. 
um, to really put down the throttle. I, it was hard to tell exactly how long they were in the crosswinds for. Uh, I don't, the Giro is not necessarily known for its crosswind type stages. Um, but still, it was exciting to have a little bit of crosswind action. Then they hit these finishing circuits, which were again, really tight, technical, hilly. And on, at the finish line, it's pouring rain. And on the other side, <laughs> where the race is going on, it's still uh, bright and sunny, just a, a freaky day out there. Yeah, and we saw with six and a half K to go, a really threatening move of five riders got up the road, spurred on by Trek Segafredo. Steve Barr went across and it looked like it was going to be a bike race from that point on. And I think that the Mitchelton Scott riders were getting in their ear the weather conditions at the finish line, which was like a proper flash flood. So they just got on the front and neutralized that group, essentially doing the work for the sprinters teams because it was absolute chaos going into the finish. Yeah, I mean, it was also really heads up riding by um, Lotto and Bora. Uh, it was uh, Trek Sega Frigo's uh, Brambilia who attacked and had an incredible attack. Trek still hasn't had a great result at this Giro yet, and obviously they're looking for something. And um, yeah, they sent, I believe it was Gaysink and uh, and the Bora rider, can't remember exactly who it was, but he um, he did a great job marking the move and just neutralizing it, and they um, they came back pretty quickly. And then the sprint, again, Viviani, we have to give him credit. We've sort of been talking about him as a... Um, a sprinter who likes the easy sprint stages, doesn't do well as well in these harder, lumpier stages. We didn't expect him to make it to the finish today, and he was off the back a number of times um, during the climbs, but got back to the front and won an incredibly hard, technical, wet, dirty sprint. Yeah, he is just, this is win number four for him. He's just brimming with confidence. And, you know, like I've said time and time again, Quick Step is just so good at that timing, and Viviani just finished it off. And Sam Bennett, close but no cigar yet again. He is just pr proving that he's the second quickest guy in this race. He, for the second time really, he just started too far back. He is really, I think, impressing everybody with the turn of speed that he's able to produce in these finales. But if he had been two wheels further up with 200 meters to go, he may have gotten the stage. But Viviani uh, is just perfect with his positioning and timing on that sprint. Yeah, I mean, and Viviani, this is his fourth stage win. He could take five in Rome. I mean, incredible Giro for him. Yeah, I would not bet against him in Rome. That is, today is the second to last sprint opportunity for the Peloton with Rome being the final. And in between now and then, we got some mountains. <laughs> three mountain stages in a row, three summit finishes in a row. Um, tomorrow's going to be exciting. I mean, this isn't... This isn't a Zonglan type finish. This is a category one climb. Uh, it comes at the end of a long flat stage, almost 200 kilometers, uh, starts in Milan. They ride across the flats all the way to the valley and then up to the top of the ski mountain. And it's only like a 7% average gradient. And the last uh, 5K is, or the last K, excuse me, or is like 5%. So. It could be an interesting, exciting finish. I'm sort of expecting like a, a small group of climbers and GC riders to come out of this. You know, I keep saying this and it keeps not working. There, there has not been a good breakaway this entire Giro d'Italia. Like the field is just trying and trying and trying, but really nobody has succeeded from a breakaway. We saw Chavez stay away on Etna. He was the lone survivor. And then we saw Mahoric with a late escape. And those are really the only two breakaways that we have to speak of this race. Tomorrow, I think it's got to be a day for the breakaway. It's a flat, smooth run in into this final climb. So if a good group gets up the road, they're not going to be so gassed by the final climb that they just lose five minutes the second the peloton lifts it up. And, you know, again, Simon Yates, he's not stressed about getting these uh, time bonuses at the finish of these mountains anymore. I would be going for the breakaway if as I was in the race. As much as I would like to see a breakaway succeed, I think it's these time bonuses that are keeping the break from actually happening. I'm, I'm expecting Sunweb to go for this. I mean, this is a climb that Dumoulin could do well on. He's done well on these shallower, shallower climbs before. So 
if he can steal back 10 seconds on a race like this tomorrow, there's, I, I, I could definitely see him going for it. I think tomorrow we'll see if he's riding for second place or if he's going to put it all out there and, and really try and go for the win. Yeah, that's uh, going to be the big question. Only one way to find out. See you guys after the stage tomorrow. Thanks for joining.